Okay, what well, color just did? Well, the Adobe, the red thing at the top. Got it. There you go. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. I'm in liquid mode. There's a liquid right, mode. Is, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know. I'm in it. I can exit out of it. I like it. Oh, is that bad? No, it's good. Cool. You can just like write on it or oh, see it, and then you have all this stuff right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. All right. What did you do? Just tapped on. Well, I, well, I tapped on it. Maybe I was tapping in the wrong place. So strong. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got. I got um, happy, You don't just want to be in liquor mode, yeah. Mike? So I am. Michael had some problems. Oh, we can begin. I reached out. All right. Everybody. We're ready to go. So, yep. All right. The first case that will be that one. Yeah. This is the August meeting of the. Administrative Appeals Board of the City of Palm Springs. Cassie, would you, uh, our Deputy Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Board Member Vasily? Here. Board Member Hayne? Here. Board Member Parker? Here. Vice Chair Vanessa? Here. And Chair Sector. <laughs> First, I'd like to welcome. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, David Parker to his first meeting. Thank Congratulations you. on your appointment. We Thank look you. forward to working with you. Uh, and also, as we like, as we start, we haven't done it in the past. Patrick will be introduced. Council, would you tell us who you are and what your job is? Yes. So we have your name. Uh, Amy Sanchez, Deputy City Attorney. Uh, I advise the the board. Uh, the administrative appeal board. And Cassie, just so we have you, would you tell them who you are and your name? I'm the deputy city clerk for the city clerk's office, and I am the board secretary for the AAB. Thank you. First item on the agenda is the acceptance of, of the agenda. So if we could have a motion, uh, the board can discuss and amend it as you would see fit. So if I could have a motion to accept the agenda, that would be great. Uh, I'll make a motion. To accept. I'll second it. Board Secretary, please take the vote. Board Member Kane? Aye. Board Member Vasily? Aye. Board Member Parker? Aye. Vice Chair Vanessa? Aye. And Chair Cynthia. <clears throat> it passes by there. Thank you. you, have to vote. Uh, you have to oh, yeah, I have to vote too, right? Aye. <laughs> Thank you, Cassie. <laughs> the next item is public comment. This time has been set aside for members of the public to address. The board on items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Three minutes will be assigned to each speaker. Although the board values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, the board generally cannot take any action on items not listed in the posted agenda. Testimony for hearings will be taken at the time of the hearing. Board Secretary, please begin the public comment period. We do not have any public speakers set up. The next item on the agenda is the appeal of the administrative decision that Nicola Smith is currently ineligible to operate a vacation rental in the city of Palm Springs and the administrative fine of $5,000 for operating an unregistered vacation rental property located at 1268 Ramon, East Ramon Road, number 20, Palm Springs, California. Please ensure the city and staff and the appellate understand their testimony is under oath. We do have signed affidavits from city staff in person. The appellant will be on Zoom. If you desire to testify under this appeal hearing, under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You can begin. Mr. Clifford, please uh, state your name and your position and present your report. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, board members, uh, city staff, uh, public on the Zoom call and attendance this evening. My name is Patrick Lipper with the Department of Study Program Compliance, and we oversee the Vacation Rental Program here in the city of Palm Springs. This afternoon is a staff report for the property located at 1268 East Hall Road, number 20. It was found that this property uh, was operating as a vacation rental as of the violating date on April 21st, 2023. In your staff report, is elements that led to the issuance of the citation. Additionally, the code compliance officer that investigated the property found the elements and 
plan education as a citation is here. And I would like to introduce and invite the court officer to provide further testimony. Thank you. Mr. Raker, would you state your name and position and present your report, please? Yes. My name is Jason Whitaker. I'm the compliance officer with the city of Palm Springs. First off, good, afternoon, good evening, members of the board, my fellow city staff, and members of the public present for tonight's hearing. Um, on Wednesday, April 19th, 2023, while conducting a review of, of available listings, rental listings on the web based booking platform, VRBO.com, I came across an advertisement in the Bristow neighborhood of Palm Springs titled Condo with 360 degree views of Palm Springs Mountains, which can be found as attachment five in the staff report. While reviewing the advertisement, it stated that the entire two bedroom condo was being offered for up to eight guests. I was unable to find a city ID number on the advertisement as required for a registered vacation rental property. So I reviewed the photos contained within the ad and I positively identified the property address as 1268 East Vermont Road, unit number 20. Upon review of the city's vacation rental registration records, I confirmed that the property identified did not hold a short-term vacation rental certificate. I then sent a message via the VRBO contact host feature, which can be found in attachment number six, about a free night stay arriving Friday, May 19th, 2023, and departing on May, Monday, May 22nd, 2023. My message stated, hi there, cute place. We're looking to book for a, a friend's birthday weekend from May 19th through May 22nd, 2023. I just wanted to see if the check-in time is flexible as we'll be driving from Santa Barbara. If not, not a deal breaker. The host, Nicoletta, responded to my inquiry with the following unique response. Good afternoon, I most definitely I most definitely can be flexible. What time are you thinking of checking in? Before I could send a reply, I received the following two additional messages from the host. Thanks for your inquiry about my vacation rental. The property is available from May 19th through May 23rd, 2023, and I'd like to invite you to stay. You are pre-approved to book, so you will automatically be confirmed if you make a payment. The property will then be booked for you for your requested dates. If you have any further questions, just let me know. Thank you, Nicoletta Smith. Following that message, I then received the following from the host again. I have, I have updated your original quote. If you wish to continue with the reservation, you may now make a payment to confirm your booking. Sorry, I clicked on one additional night in the previous quote. Thank you, Nicoletta, Nicoletta Smith. Subsequently, after receiving this last message from the host, I received an invitation to book by Nicoletta for a stay for May 19th through May 22nd, 2023. As a result of my findings contained within the advertisement, the unique response to my inquiry, as well as the host invitation to book for a three night stay, I found the property located at 1268 East Ramon Road, Unit 20 was in violation of PSMC 5.25.040A, operating a vacation rental without a vacation rental registration certificate and I issued administrative citation number AB0511 to the property owner on title, Nicoletta Smith. This will conclude what I have to present, so I will hand it back over to Patrick, and I'm available to answer any questions. Does the board have questions of either Mr. Clifford or Mr. Whitaker? I, I have one, Jason, just for my own education, if you will. Sure. Uh, when an owner lists on VRBO or Airbnb, is there something on there that says that they, um, I don't know, research city requirements for a uh, license or a contract or anything? I don't I believe. Think. I don't believe so, but okay. I, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Okay, thank you. Um, and you had said that you had found this just in doing your normal research. Of those yes. websites. Yes. Okay. All right, I have nothing further. If there are any further questions, uh, I would open the <clears throat> appeal hearing. The opponent is invited to speak for up to 10 minutes. Any members of the public who desire to speak on this appeal hearing 
shall have up to three minutes to speak. If any member of the public testifies, the appellant will be invited to provide a rebuttal for up to two additional minutes. Board Secretary, please begin the public testimony period. As advised, if you desire to testify under this appeal hearing, under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept the knowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Ms. Smith, you may begin. Uh, good afternoon, um, board members. Uh, I'm Nicoletta Smith, and um, I have purchased this property. It's not really a vacation. I don't know whatever uh, the classification was, a vacation rental. It's more of a, a property that I invested my life savings to um, leave for my children. I am a single mom uh, and I foster children and my children have um, mental and physical disabilities and also gender identity issues. And so I was thinking of their future to try to have a place in Palm Springs because Palm Springs is a city known for, um, you know, the acceptance of anyone with whatever gender, whatever identity, whatever. Um, and so I decided to do that last year. Um, I um, also decided to uh, place my rental or place it for rental because I live in Los Angeles. My children are under at the age of uh, 18 and um, I have to take care of their medical uh, stuff and they have court cases and what have you. So I cannot move to Palm Springs currently, but um, it's more for a future. Um, but I got a loan on this property. So somehow I have to figure out how, she can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was uh, seeing some um, mo motion, so I was wondering if you're hearing me. Um, anyways, last year I um, wanted to have it rented in a long term because I'm not sure if it's like going to be five years or whatever amount of time until my children are able to, um, you know, take um, responsibility and or move there. But um, I had a very bad luck with that. I, uh, I guess I don't understand all the laws uh, and uh, rental. And um, I had a lady come in and um, she didn't have all the down, um, the payment to you know, rent the facility or my, my place. And uh, she told me to give her a break because she was involved in some um, you know, marriage where it was, uh, really bad for her and she's just coming out of a divorce and she doesn't have what have you to rent properly so i i tried to give her a break and i understood that there's some funds for people with not a lot of money that um you know she could secure so eventually she can pay me but it was all a lie and uh i ended up uh, having to evict her and um i lost more than twenty thousand dollars and that's a lot for a single mom like me so uh, after that happened, um, I heard that I can put the place on a rental and I'm really honestly afraid to move somebody in because this lady stayed there and destroyed my property and didn't pay rent for like eight plus months and destroyed my property. She took my, my refrigerator apart. Uh, she left garbage all over and um, no, I, I had no idea how there was nobody to help me. Um, and uh, I did all the filings she did file to get rental assistance, but apparently she didn't file all the paperwork and nobody released me any funds. And so I was kind of desperate to have this covered because I don't know what to do. And so somebody suggested Verbo, so I listed on Verbo. I had no idea that I have to have some registration or this would be some short-term rental um, I'm terribly sorry. I, uh, you know, I, of course, I am kind of desperate to have some money, some income coming in because uh, not only did she not pay the rent and I had to pay out of pocket for all the expenses like the association fee and my mortgage and, and, you know, electrical bill because part of that she also did not pay any, anything. Um, so uh, I, I, listed my property there. I did not know that I have to have some registration. Um, I did pay my taxes. I paid my taxes to, you know, yearly. I, I didn't know that there's other taxes. 
um, I did see there's some taxes on Verbo and I added that to, but I, I don't understand all those things that are listed there. So um, when I received the invitation for the three days, of course, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to rent my place. I didn't know there's restrictions as to renting this way or that way. Um, you know, after I got the fine is when I uh, went on the city clerks or the whatever website to find out that there is other compliance issues. And if you rent it in one way is different than renting it to on another way. So um, I, I'm actually asking the board that, um, you know, since I, I really was not aware of all those restrictions and it's my first time, it's not like uh, I'm, uh, um, you know, trying to break the law. I, I never tried to break the law. I don't have any infractions anywhere. I don't have anything against me anywhere for anything. Um, and I try to be respectful and take care of, you know, the society and, you know, not even my, you know, not biological children. I'm taking care of other people. Uh, I respectfully ask that um, you don't uh, bar, because my understanding is that you're trying to bar my name from forever renting or something like that. And a $5,000 fine is a lot of money. I've already lost a lot of money last year on this. Um, even trying to get this um, this um, appeal, it was very a lot of money for me to come up with so that I can be heard. But I think that it's important that you guys know uh, all the facts and circumstances. Um, and I feel like I was deceived. I was deceived last year by the lady who came in and gave me some story. And uh, I guess I was deceived uh, by getting this uh, uh, request to rent my unit uh, online. Uh, I, I just, I feel, it feels that it's not fair. And I don't want my name forever barred from Palm Springs. I, I haven't done anything, uh, you know, uh, any other thing but this. Uh, so I, I, I did not know I'm breaking the law. So I respectfully mm -hmm. ask that this be reconsidered. And um, Anything else? Yes, I would like for you guys to change it to a warning rather than a fine and allow my name, not bar my name forever. That's just a lot for one time. All right, thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions from the board? Uh, I do. Yes, uh, I was looking at you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so you had mentioned that you added, uh, you somewhere found out that there were, when you said you paid your taxes, were you referring to your property taxes? Yes. Okay. And then you, you had testified that you had uh, somehow found out that there were additional taxes due. So you added that on VRBO. Can you explain that, what you added I don't really know exactly. I just put a number there because I didn't understand what it was. And you, when you say you just put a number there, what is I, I'm I don't understand. I think I put on nine or ten percent. I don't really know what taxes that was. I just put like some taxes. It asked me to put tax in there. Okay. And I think I even changed it uh, because I I I don't understand like. Uh, I don't know what the percent I should put for taxes. I don't even know where to get the percent or why, how it's considered a percent because it's a bill usually that's sent yearly. Actually, it's more multiple bills. It's kind of confusing in the city of Palm Springs because um, in Los Angeles, I don't get two tax bills, but in the city of Palm Springs, I got the different tax bills. I guess there's a tax bill for if you have a property on land lease, and uh, another tax bill for your property. It was very confusing. Okay, and then uh, were you the, you were the one, I think you said, you set up the ad on VRBO. That's correct. And did you do any research when you were setting up the ad? Uh, you said when you went on, after you got the fine, you went on the city's website and you saw that there was a permit required was there any research done at all before you set up the ad? 
I did not do any research. I mean, I did not know I needed to do research. Uh, I did research after uh, when I received the fine is when I started researching to see what uh, this is, what, what this means, what it entails. I don't understand. Okay, thank you. I have nothing further. Mr. Parker, anything? Yes, thanks. Thank you. I just have a question. Does your HOA, is there a um, requirement for uh, length of rental term in your HOA for your complex? Uh, I don't recall that. I don't think, so. I don't know, but I don't recall that. Okay, thank you. Okay, who's next? Jocelyn, do you have any questions? No. No questions, Patrick? No, no questions. Okay, thank you for your time and for your testimony. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, can I ask a question of sure. Sabre? Sure. Um, that Mr. Parker's question prompted for me. Do we know, does this complex even allow short-term rentals? Not 100% sure if they do or do not. I looked up, uh, we don't have any registered vacation rentals in that um, complex at one point, like around 2017, 2016, there were, um, which leads me to think that maybe the HOA does not allow them more and they couldn't secure the HOA letter that would request um, to continue the certificate. But as of right now, we definitely don't have any registered vacation rentals in the entire complex. All right, thank you. Okay, now we need to have a board discussion or additional questions from the board. Any discussions starting with Mr. Vasily? I do not have any questions at all. Discussion. Are we doing discussion? discussion. Yeah, we're doing discussion. Uh, sorry. Um, no, uh, it's just this is an unfortunate situation. Unfortunately, we've seen it before. And unfortunately, you know, people. Um, not doing research before putting a property on the market um, doesn't excuse um, the responsibility. And so, again, uh, this is a situation that we've seen many times over, and there's really nothing we can do about it. Ms. Parker, any discussion? No, I'm in agreement with what. Okay. Mr. Facilli. Facilli, thank you. So I would tend to agree. Um, you know, I uh, we have been through this many, many times, and um, you know, to to research afterwards, I think you put yourself in a, a precarious position. Um, that simple step beforehand could have saved all of this. Um, she's clearly admitted that she rented it. You know, when we see from the the report, there were a variety of reviews, so there was. Um, there were uh, a number of rentals, so we can also probably assume that no tax was paid because since there was no permit, there would have been no tax, but she was collecting tax. Um, you know, that's a, a separate uh, issue on top of this. So, um, you know, she's admitted that she was renting without a permit, um, and, you know, the, the ordinance is pretty clear on that. Ms. Kane? Yeah, I don't think I have anything constructive to add. And I this frustrates me a lot, um, but I probably it's inappropriate. So um, I don't have anything further. Like Thank you. Just for the appellants, so there's a complete understanding under this under the ordinance. We're only allowed to either say yes or no. We're not allowed to give warnings or to change anything about the uh, fine or the. Uh, uh, failure to uh, uh, be able to rent in the future. May I have a, a motion from someone, please? Can, can I also then, just for clarity's sake, make it clear to the appellant based on what I heard, this is not ban you as a human from Palm Springs. Uh, this just says you cannot do short-term rentals in this city. Uh, that's what that means. So you can, if you are game, rent for 29 days or more uh and that's up to you and you are certainly not banned from the city <laughs> so uh that this just applies to vacation rentals and this ordinance that we have is extremely strict so you just won't have to mess with it 
I think at this point. Uh, but we need to take a vote. So well, you we need a motion first. Thank you for your clarification, Ms. K. I would we, move to uphold the ban and the fine. A second. A second. Any questions? Or sorry, any further discussion? I, I have a question. This is Nicholas. I'm Smith. sorry, your time your time is over. Uh, uh, Clark, would you please call the roll? Vice Chair Vanessa? Aye. Board Member Parker? Aye. Board Member Kane? Aye. Board Member Vasily? Aye. And Chair Sinclair? Aye. Uh, motion carries by zero to adopt resolution of the So the ban and the fine have been upheld. You may rent for 28 days or more. No. Uh, 29. That's not 28. Uh, it actually is red. I believe it says 28, 28. nights. 28 29. nights. That means 29 days. Right. And uh, the city will be in touch with you with regard to uh, working out a payment on the on the fine. Thank you for your time. The next case is a candy wampus across the street from where I live. So I'm turning the uh, turning the proceedings over to Mr. Vanessa while I. Exit That's five. Uh, five. Thank you. Um, you don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to remember it. All right. Uh, thank you. Next item on the agenda is concerning the property at 2811 East Sandia Road. Sandia. Sandia. Thank you. <laughs> As he walks out of the room. Um, and is an appeal of a $5,000 fine and an administrative decision that Lightspeed Investments is permanently ineligible to operate a vacation rental in the city of Palm Springs. Board Secretary, can you please ensure that the city staff and the appellant understand that their testimony is under oath? We do have signed affidavits from city staff and appellant if in person. Anyone on Zoom who desires to testify under this appeal hearing under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. To begin. City staff, can you please present your report? Yes, thank you, Vice Chair, Board Members, City Staff, residents, citizens on the Zoom call and attending uh, the meeting this evening. My name is Patrick Clifford with the Department of Special Program Compliance, and we oversee the vacation rental program here at the City of Palm Springs. Before you this evening is a staff report. Relating to the property located at 2811 East Sandia Road here in Palm Springs. It was found that the owner of the property uh, was operating as a vacation rental as of the violation date as April 27, 2023, included in the staff reports of the elements that led to the issuance of the citation. Additionally, the code compliance officer that investigated the property and issued the citation is here this evening, and I would like to invite the code officer to provide further testimony. Thank you. Good morning. Good evening, members of the board, my fellow city staff, members of the public present for tonight's hearing. My name is Jason Whitaker, and I'm a code compliance officer with the city of Palm Springs. On Thursday, April 27th, 2023, while conducting a review of available rental listings on the web-based booking platform, Airbnb.com, I came across an advertisement in the Gene Autry neighborhood of Palm Springs titled Coachella Retreat with Private Pool. It can be found as attachment number five in the staff report. While reviewing the advertisement, it stated that the entire three bedroom home was being offered for up to eight guests. I was unable to find a city ID number on the advertisement as required for a registered vacation rental property, so I reviewed the photos contained within the ad, and I was able to positively identify the property address as 2811 East Sandio Road. Upon review of the city's vacation rental registration records, I confirmed that the property identified did not hold a vacation rental registration certificate. I then sent a message via the Airbnb.com contact host feature, which can be found as attachment number six, inquiring about a four-night stay arriving Thursday, June 8th, 2023, and departing on Monday, June 12th, excuse me, 2023. My message stated, hey there, really nice place. We are looking to book for a birthday getaway from June 8th, 2023 through June 12th of 2023. I just wanted to inquire about the spring specials. Also, is the check-in time flexible? Not an issue if not. Thanks. The host, Mark, 
responded to my inquiry with the following unique response. Hi, Wayne, thank you for your inquiry. Our home is available over the date requested and we would love to host you. The availability of an early check-in depends on the day you arrive. If another guest is checking out on the same day you arrive, housekeeping will need time to clean the home before you can check in. We will do our best to accommodate you. <laughs> we will send you a special offer to include the spring discount. After receiving this message, I received a notification that the host, Mark, sent me a special offer to book a short-term stay for the dates of June 8th through June 12th of 2023. I then received a second notification that co-host Gerardo also sent a special offer to book. As a result of my findings contained within the advertisement, the unique response to my inquiry, as well as the host invitation to book the property for a four-night stay, I found that the property located at 2811 East Sambia Road was in violation of 5.25.040A, operating a vacation rental without a vacation rental registration certificate. And I issued administrative citation number AB0513 to the property owner on title, Light Speed Investments. That will include what I have to present, and I will hand it over to Patrick. I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Um, at this time, we will open it up to questions from the board to the city. Uh, why don't we start with Mr. Basili? I have no questions. Mr. Parker. No questions, thank you. Vice Chair Kane. Did you look up? Oh, sorry, Vice Chair, you're not Vice Chair. I'm not Vice Chair, that's okay. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. Let's start right to it. Uh, did you look up how many higher, like I'm, I saw a ton of reviews and, and it's like, it said 1,100 reviews, but like the reviews aren't here. My recollection for that property was there were no reviews, it was a new listing. Oh, um, so the they must have other. tied to the host. host. The yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So there weren't any. All right. But then you attached um <clears throat> the, this additional information. I guess it's in the ad about this space, right? In your yes. In about this space, right? It talks about the Palm Springs rental ordinance. Yes. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> Just that's, being clear that's why about we take a screen capture of the whole entire ad. Right. Okay. Uh, got it. Okay. Well, that's all I have to say. Uh, just a, a simple question for me. Is this, oh, so this is a single family home? Correct. Okay. okay. So not in an intro way. Um, I have no other questions. <clears throat> all right. Thank you. Anything further from the city? Nothing further. further. Thank you. All right. At this time, I'd like to open the appeal hearing. The appellant is invited to speak for up to 10 minutes. Any member of the public who desires to speak on this appeal hearing shall have up to three minutes to speak. If a member of the public testifies, the appellant will be invited to provide a rebuttal for up to two additional minutes. Board Secretary, could you please begin the public testimony period? I'm not sure, is the appellant on Zoom? Is anybody present for light speed investments? Yes. Jeanette, are you a part of light speed investments? No, I'm representing with Martin Castrillo. Okay, as advised in the chat, well, you're the last hearing, so I'll go ahead and mute you again. I don't have anybody here for this. Hmm. They did advise that they were going to be on via Zoom. I emailed them back and forth a few different times. Okay. All right. Um, I assume the city does not have any response to no testimony. Nothing further. All right. Thank you. At this time, we'll open that up to the board members for discussion. Um, why don't we start with Mr. Basili again? Um, <clears throat> can I ask? Uh, you mentioned something in the ad about um, yeah. ordinances. Yeah, so you're looking so at the about this space. It's, there's a there's the ad, and then there's like a whole bunch of information, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, it talks about the Palm Springs noise ordinance. It talks about it's after the air cover, right? Do you see it? Can yeah, you help yeah. him? Oh. It's like page 30, look at page 30 there and starts at 31 on mine anyway. Um, I don't know if on you're the side. The counter see the side? On the side? Sorry about that. So it's this um, it's about this the space. Bottom, two, it, I just three. pointed out because it's particularly ironic uh, to me. And it talks about, let's see if I can find it here to show you. Uh, in the, uh, you know, parties. Um, <clears throat> It's, Palm Springs rental ordinance. They actually yeah. have it in the ad that the Palm Springs has a st strictly enforced vacation rental uh, property. Okay. So, so now I, I can't respond. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is, this is you know, contradicting. I mean, uh, I can understand maybe why they're not on, on the call because they pretty much, um, they admitted even in their own ad that they're violating the ordinance. So this is pretty easy to um, to um, discuss and also make a decision on, um, you know, they violated the ordinance, it's clear. And they put it in, they put it in their ad as well. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, Vice Chair Kane. Yeah, you know, you can, you can use my name. Uh, I, I, I obviously that, uh, I get, I get frustrated, and certainly we sit, we take the time to come here. They take the time and the money to ask for an appeal. And when people don't show up, then there's a consequence to that. I think, but we will take a vote. That sounds good. My my first question to them was going to be exactly what you pointed out. It's like seeing that in the uh, in the ad as well. Am I on? Did that operate again? I don't have anything else. So, you know, I guess I'm going to repeat what, what you have all uh, mentioned already. Um, you know, they hired a management company that if assuming the management company built this ad, they knew there was an ordinance, um, presuming that if they knew there was an ordinance, they would know since they put it in writing what the ordinance requires. Um, I agree with uh, Ms. Kane that, um, you know, when you take the time um, to put us through this, uh, pay for this, that not showing up um, mm -hmm. is unfortunate because you're not offering any explanation or defense. Um, but it seems pretty clear that they were renting or were intending to rent short term without yet having obtained a permit. Whether they were intending to ever get a permit, we don't know because they're not here, but uh, they were clearly offering it for rent without a permit. Um, unless anybody else has any more discussion, um, if there's a motion, I'll make a motion to uh, uphold the uh, the fine. I'll second. Board Secretary, could you please call the vote? Board Member Vasily? Aye. Board Member Kane? Aye. Board Member Parker? Aye. And Vice Chair Panessa? Aye. Passes. Motion carries 4 0 with one refusal to adopt resolution. All right. Thank you. Thanks everyone for your time and effort on that. Um, we will bring uh, Chair Sinclair uh, back. Yes, Brad. And move on to item number six. Back from the penalty box. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, next item is agenda number six concerning the property. Located at 806 East Racket Club, it's an appeal of a $2,500 fine and administrative decision of a six-month suspension of a vacation rental registration certificate. Board Secretary, would you please ensure that the city staff and appellant understand that their testimony is under oath? 
We do have signed affidavits from city staff and the appellant is on Zoom. If you desire to testify at this appeal hearing under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You can begin. Mr. Clifford, would you please present the staff report? Yes, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, board members, residents on Zoom, and joining us um, at the meeting this evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Clifford with the Department of Special Program and Compliance. We oversee the vacation oil program here at the City of Palm Springs. But before you this evening is a staff report for the property located at 806 East Brackett Road. <clears throat> Some background, uh, this property is a rented vacation rental with a start date of February 7th, 2023. It was found that this property uh, did not file the required contract summaries uh, as required uh, by Ordinance 275. Contract summaries are required to be submitted before each short-term vacation rental stay. The code officer that investigated this property is here to provide further information uh, regarding the investigation and what led to the issue of the citation. Additionally, on attachment six in your staff report is a review of the contract summary submitted. That review found that 14 summaries have been filed as of August 16, 2023, with the first submission as of June 15, 2023. There was also an email sent to the property owners on February 7th. 2023, that communicated the requirement to provide contract summaries and that didn't really provide a link to where to access our web based contract summary tool. Additionally, the code of compliance officer obtained transient occupancy tax documents supporting short term stays between the months of March and April of 2023, and that's included as attachment seven. And additionally, with comparing that information, uh, the code of compliance office found that contract summaries had not been submitted for the property and which led to the issuance of the citation. Additionally, I would like to invite the code officer to provide further information regarding the investigation and uh, feel free to provide further testimony. Thank you. Thank you much. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Mitch Napan. I'm one of the code compliance supervisors for the city of Palm Springs, and I specifically oversee the vacation rental enforcement program for code. Um, while Officer Whitaker was the issuing officer on the citation, I did work very closely with him in putting this um, investigation and documents together for the site. Um, did choose to present for him to kind of cut him a break for the additional uh, appeals that he had uh, for this evening. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, welcome uh, again. Good evening to, to my fellow city staff and members of the public that are joining us uh, for tonight's hearing. Um, on Sunday, June 11th, at approximately 9.20 a.m., code officers Bermuda and Whitaker responded to a report of a disturbance at a vacation rental property located at 806 East Rock Club Road, referencing a possible violation of the vehicle limits. Uh, upon arrival at the property, the resulting observation led to the officers contacting the occupants at the front door confirming their vacation rental stay and issuing a citation to the responsible renter for vehicles exceeding the permitted limit. While conducting follow-up back at his workstation, Officer Whitaker searched the city's applicable record-keeping database and could not locate any contract summary submissions for 806 East Rock Club Road, city ID number 53720. At that point, Officer Whit Whitaker contacted me with his initial findings. Uh, I conducted a secondary search for contract summary submissions for this property, confirmed that none were on file, and instructed Officer Whitaker to request additional records from the vacation owners. Officer Whitaker then contacted the property owners, Josh and Maria, to follow up regarding the complaint received and the observed violation. Additionally, knowing that there were no reported contract summary submissions, Officer Whitaker requested copies of the signed and completed City of Palm Springs Vacation Rental Statement of Rules and Regulations forms for all guest stays and vacation rental bookings that they've had from the start of their uh, issuance of certificate in February 2023 to present uh, at the time, which was June 2023, uh, in accordance with Chapter 525.80 of Vacation Rental Ordinance. Uh, this chapter is related to audits and states that each owner, agent, or representative of any owner shall provide the enforcement official with access to each vacation rental and the books, records, documents, papers, tax returns, and bank accounts 
at any time during normal business hours as the enforcement official may determine are necessary or convenient for the purpose of inspection or audit to determine that the objectives and conditions of this chapter are being fulfilled. Additionally, Officer Whitaker followed that phone call up with an email confirming his request and establishing the submission deadline. Uh, and that can be seen on the first page of attachment number seven. Uh, it's important to note that completing the statement of rules and regulations is a separate requirement, in addition to and not in lieu of submitting a contract summary, and is generally done during the check-in process between the property owner or their agent and their guests. Copies of this form are only provided to the city if requested. In this case, they were requested so that we can determine the property's utilization as a vacation rental and ensure compliance uh, with the limits of contracts for vacation rental use. Uh, Mr. Parker responded with an email on Monday, June 12th, 2023, acknowledging that after speaking with Officer Whitaker, they followed up with their representative and found there was a misunderstanding, which ultimately resulted in the failure to obtain the forms that we had requested as required uh, for each of their disclosed 13 vacation rental stays thus far. Uh, and that can be found on page number two of attachment seven. During the course of our investigation, we found a cor uh, corresponding advertisement for the property on Airbnb, which can also be found in attachment seven, uh, which have reviews dating back to April of 2023, which is consistent with when this property was issued its initial registration certificate. There were approximately five reviews from guests who had stayed at the property. We also confirmed that TOT remittances were submitted for the property, um, which also confirmed that they were facilitating vacation rental stays. After reviewing all the findings in our investigation, it was determined that Mr. Parker and Ms. Granberg were in violation of PSMC 525-070H for facilitating vacation rental stays between March 2023 and June 2023 and failing to submit a contract summary prior to their guests taking occupancy in each case. As a result, Officer Whitaker drafted a notice of violation and a citation to the vacation rental owners, Josh Parker and Maria Granberg, and was sent via certified mail to the address on file. And it should be noted, I know Patrick mentioned in as part of the attachments at the bottom of attachment seven, um, there was a screen capture that was taken in, on June 22nd, which showed all of the submitted contract summaries up to that point. Uh, the furthest left column has the, the date stamp, and that's the, the time of submission. Um, so the first submission of a contract summary from for this property was on June 15th, which was after we had these conversations mm -hmm. with the property owners um, and, and not before. And then since, I think when Patrick ran his report, uh, which was just recently, they had some additional ones that were added. Uh, and that will conclude what I have to present, but uh, I am available for any questions the board may have. Officer Whitaker is also available. If there's any questions that I'm unable to answer, you can provide clarity to He's obviously in the room. Um, but I'll get back to the pattern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And have no further information. Thanks. Are there any questions of the city from the board? Ms. Kane. Patrick, did they pay TOT before June? Right. Like, I couldn't find. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't find that. I see all the information for contract summaries, but I didn't see the TOT. Yes, I believe so. Let me grab the attachment. Which one is it? Here, so I know. But so that's just, there's no like yes, table or list or something. March, April, and that's perfect. Yeah. So there's March, that's May. Oh, well, you pay April's in May. Okay, April. You pay uh, March's in April. Is there always do the next Okay, one? got it. So there's March and April and everything ongoing from there. Uh, it looks like if I only have the uh, ones from March and April. Um, that doesn't mean there aren't others. Doesn't mean there aren't others. I'd have to pull the record, but that was stuff was uh, provided. Okay, because I was to be clear, they were given a permit in February, correct? And in that initial email, there's conversations or there's instruction on contract summaries, right? Right. right. Then I couldn't find anything in the contract summary until June, but we do have evidence, lots of evidence, <laughs> that they have had renters. And, and the purpose of contract summaries is clear, I think to all of us, certainly. Um, and yeah, this is, mess. this is a mess. Okay. So I have a question. Um, did I uh, glean from all of this that there were actually two issues? That what started it is a complaint that there were too many cars. Mm -hmm. Correct. 
Um, so that would have been a, a citation. But on top of that, you found that there was no contract summaries and, and researching. So like when you went to research after the complaint, you say, well, because you I think you frequently tell us one of your first steps, is there a contract summary? Yes. And you found, am I correct, that you found that there was no contract summary? Correct. So were there two citations issued or just one? So on, on Sunday, there was a citation that was issued to the property owner's guests. The Oh, to so the guests. Got so you. that was an act of disturbance for yeah. violation of the vehicles over the permitted limit. Um, and then additionally, in follow-up, as we were doing, uh, as we saw that there weren't any contract summaries, that was uh, enforcement action that was taken on the property owner okay. themselves uh, for not completing those administrative tasks. Got it. That that citation issued to the guest is still a strike against the owner, correct? Correct. correct. Yeah. Thank you. And um, Patrick, you had mentioned uh, um, that in February, did I understand this correctly, there was a reminder sent about contract summaries? It's the same. Or is that just the Sorry, letter? It's with the letter. The it's the right. same so welcome, letter. Because okay. yeah. well, I saw that letter where it states there's a yeah. link. Yep, um, that's the, the same one that okay. says, here's your number. But it wasn't a separate thing where you were saying, hey, we're not seeing contract summaries. You're supposed to arrive. No, okay. this is the initial one. That's, uh, that's All right, thank you. Anything further? Mr. Parker? No, I'm good. Thank Mr. Vasily? No, no questions. At this time, uh, I would like to open the public hearing. The appellant is invited to speak for up to 10 minutes. Any members of the public who wish to speak in this appeal hearing shall have up to three minutes to speak. If any member of the public testifies, the appellant will be invited to provide a rebuttal of up to two additional minutes. Board Secretary, please begin the public testimony period. As advised, if you desire to testify under this appeal hearing under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Mr. Parker, you may go ahead. Hey, can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Josh. My wife was just with me, but she's wrangling our three-year-old right now. Uh, I just wanted to thank you guys uh, for taking the time to hear our appeal. We're very appreciative of the city of Palm Springs and uh, very grateful to own a property there. So uh, first and foremost, I uh, just want to acknowledge that, yes, it was our responsibility to submit the contract summaries, uh, and we, we do acknowledge uh, our failure to do so between March and June. Um, Please know this was absolutely unintentional, um, as expressed in the email that was you know, referred mm -hmm. to on 612 to Jason and Mitchell and Arwell and Chantel. Uh, it wasn't until after <clears throat> one of our tenants was issued that citation on the 11th that it was even brought to our attention that the contract summaries weren't being submitted. Um, when we spoke with Jason, I think it was on that Sunday morning, uh, and he notified us about the tenant uh, having the car you know, on the sidewalk. Uh, he told us that we would receive one strike for that citation to the tenant uh, and another strike for not submitting the contract summaries because he said that they weren't able to find them. Uh, he did tell us that if we received three strikes within a year of receiving our permit, we would receive a two-year ban. Um, but it, it wasn't until we received the administrative citation uh, dated on 615 that we were uh, aware of the six-month suspension and fine. Um, not making excuses, but we are new to Palm Springs and we are new to short-term rentals. And so upon receiving our permit on February 27th of this year, um, we reached out to our management company, uh, which is called Evolve. They're the ones who advertise the property to let them know that our permit was approved because obviously we are well aware that we cannot um, advertise a, a, a property unless we had that permit. Uh, in our subsequent discussions with them, we did ask them about, you know, in that email, it, it talks about the contract summaries, um, and they told Maria um, that they take care of that. Obviously, there was a big misunderstanding. Uh, I think they were probably referring to the contracts on Airbnbs uh, and not necessarily submitting the contract summaries uh, to the city. I just want to make it clear by no means were we trying to rent the short term rental without the knowledge, this is Maria, <laughs> of the city of Palm Springs. Uh, on the contrary, like we did everything else that was required. Uh, we submitted the TOT payments as soon as the short term rental income was generated. I think in late March was our first um, renter, uh, and we did submit those documents. Um, and honestly, it wasn't until after Jason's call and us reaching out to Evolve for the 
the requested docs that we were told that um, not only did they not have the copies of the rules and regulations, uh, which they also told us that they take care of, but they also did not submit the summaries. In our email to the city of Palm Springs on the 12th, um, we just let them know, obviously, that we were sorry, uh, that moving forward, you know, the a certain protocol would obviously be adhered to, i.e. the when the booking is made, we will uh, submit the contract summaries immediately. And I think as evidence um, by the submissions after June 15th, we have done so. Uh, of course, we also, once we received the administrative citation um, about the suspension, we reached out to Evolve and said, you know, by no means can you guys um, continue to advertise the property um, until we know what the resolution of this appeal is going to be. But uh, we did have bookings, uh, a handful of bookings between the 15th of June and uh, in August. And of course, we've submitted the contract summaries for all of them. Uh, Maria has received signed uh, statements of rules and regulations and the good neighbor documents from all of the tenants since then and has had you know, a FaceTime or a Zoom meeting with them uh, to review the procedures and ensure that they're adhered to. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't really know what to say other than that. Uh, we love this Palm Springs area. We're hoping to retire there. Uh, honestly, the six month suspension would create a financial hardship uh, for us. So we are requesting uh, leniency given the circumstances and um, just wanna thank you for your consideration. Much appreciated. Thank you. Anything else? That is all. Thank you. Uh, discussion and or additional questions by the board. Um, I have a question, a quick question. Um, and that is, um, is I'm not familiar with Evolve Management Company. Are they, do you have any idea where they're located at? Know where they're located? No, I'm not. I honestly not sure. Uh, we found them that they came highly recommended by other people that were doing short term rental properties. But my assumption is that they do cities outside of the city of Palm Springs and aren't necessarily very savvy with the ordinance uh, required in the city of Palm Springs. Yeah, unfortunately, that happens sometimes when you're dealing with a company that doesn't uh, isn't located within the city limits. Um, no other questions. Questions, discussion, from the other members of the board. So um, uh, uh, just to follow up on Mr. Basili's question, do you know, do they have other properties in Palm Springs that they manage? We do not. Was that directed towards us? This is our, yes. our only other property other than our-, not, our... Uh, not that you have other properties. Do they manage other properties in Palm oh, Springs? Yes, I'm, I'm assuming so. I, I didn't make that assumption, but I would assume they, if you go on evolve.com, that's their website. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And then um, um, the initial, so the permit was set up, um, Was did you do the, you or your wife do the permit application? Yeah. Yeah, well, I did. Maria handled just about all of the, the footwork leading up to the application. I think we applied in October um, mm -hmm. and we, we went through, you know, all of the, the, the steps in order to acquire the permit, which we got in, in late February. We were probably caught up in that, that hiatus of no permits. Um, okay, so I guess, and the reason I asked that was um, if you did the permit application ostensibly that checklist page you would have initialed next to the um the comp or the point that contract summaries are required that was also listed on the letter you got with the permit um so um, there was an acknowledgement of the contract summaries were required correct uh, yes and, and as stated you know the only thing we said is that after we had forwarded the permit and that letter to our management company, the conversation that was had with them gave us the assumption that they handled all of that, you know, is, and that's, you know, it wasn't our intention to not submit them. We were just, we assumed that that was part of Evolve's um, scope as a management company. Yeah, thank you. 
Any other discussion, questions? I don't have any questions. And for Ms. Kane. Ms. Kane. Okay, is there a discussion on the case for the board? Who wants to go first? <laughs> so, I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, the city seems, from what we see, the city makes it pretty clear that this is a requirement. Um, you know, there's an acknowledgement that they knew about it, they filled out the application, knew about the requirement, and unfortunately, that requirement wasn't satisfied. Any other discussion? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it, it, this is the problem that that homeowners have when they hire a company that doesn't understand the local regulations, and the homeowners get um, penalized for it as a result of it. And this is another example. We've seen this example before where people use management companies because of many reasons, because referrals or they're cheaper. Um, it's really important that people ask if a management company is actually working in a city and do their research because unfortunately this is what exactly happens. Um, there is a penalty for not submitting these reports and the homeowners um, sign off on these reports saying that they'll make sure that they get, they get submitted and they hire a company that doesn't do it. And ultimately it's the homeowners that that's responsible. So this is another example of a case that we've seen many times. Further discussion? I'll just, I'll just weigh in that Evolve, according to my phone, has 351 rentals in Palm Springs listed. And that scares me a little bit. Um, yeah, this is super unfortunate. Uh, you know, we can talk about this till the cows come home, but like, you know, this is a house in a neighborhood, and if you want to use your house a certain way, it's fine. Um, but yeah, putting it in the hands of a company that doesn't seem to care about the rules that we set here, and these are really strict for a reason. And they're strict because we may not have any if we don't have strict rules, and we're trying to preserve, I think, part of our, you know, neighborhood fabrics, and that's really important, and there's a balance, and this is like, really harsh reality, but this is what we live with here. If you want to come play in this sandbox, I guess these are the rules. <laughs> so that's all I got to say. Mr. Parker, anything? No, thank you. May I have a motion? You're the motion guy. Okay. <laughs> I motion that we um, uphold the uh, the uh, fine and the, uh, the penalty for um, the six months. Any discussion? I'll second. I'll second. I have a question. Um, do they have any choice into when that six months occurs? So with the suspension, we usually have it as a, a wind down period. We send the suspension letter has a specific date. We haven't worked with um, uh, appellants before to you know try to mitigate any kind of last minute reservations that need to be canceled. So that's something we can work with um, the appellant to see you know is it date within reason. I'm gonna ask that you do that as much as possible. Thank you. Would this one have started in June? No, this one actually um the suspension letter just went out so I think in attachments uh let me pull it up here this one I don't know it's in once we had to have drafted this. the letter and had it signed by our city manager the effective date with this one is coming up actually it hasn't started yet the effective suspension mm -hmm. This one. It was the end of August. Yeah, it was at the end of August. Oh, so there's there. not like a stay in the period of this appeal? Let me just grab the letter. We've seen these before where the suspension has already started. Yeah, well, most, most of the time with our uh, six month suspensions, but by the time the four years of cases, the suspension has already started. And what we usually do is a three, uh, when we get the initial citation and we can get the letter signed by the city manager. It's a, a three week and three, usually three weeks before that suspension would take place to help wind down any kind of um, impacts to short term stays that they have. Uh, with this one, though, I believe it was uh, 
uh, we just got the letter signed by the um, but the, drafted by our staff, myself, and then signed by the city manager. So I think it takes place within next week or the week after. Um, not for the attachment. Okay, but but that and um, but there's hmm, intriguing. All right, but there's some play in it. Based on, even if there's no stay during an appeal period, you can adjust the dates as you see fit based on. Yeah, we we've, we've worked with appellants just to okay. make sure there's just nothing. Pen, you know, penalizing guests that already have a vacation yeah. plan okay. um, and coming in. Uh, the last thing we want to do is disrupt their stay. Okay. Um, but so the effective short term stay, uh, the effective date for the suspension is August 28, 2023, and will end February 20th, 2023. If August 28th seems to might have um, impact stays, we can definitely work with the pilot to see, make sure that any guests they come in will you know, be impacted by that. Okay. Thank you. Will the secretary please call the vote? Board Member Basili? Aye. Vice Chair Vanessa? Aye. Board Member Payne? Aye. Board Member Parker? Aye. And Chair Sinclair? Aye. Motion carries 5 0 to adopt resolution of holding. The uh, fine and suspension have been upheld. Uh, the ordinance, I would tell the appellants, is very strict. We have no leeway to give leniency or do anything other than an up or down vote on this. Obviously, as you've probably just heard, the city will work with you on these dates and on the payment of fine. With that, this concludes the hearing, and we thank you, uh, everybody, for the time. The next hearing is item number seven concerning the property at 2820 North Arcadia Court, number B-206. It's a uh, Cynthia uh, <clears throat> Martin Castrillo is permanently ineligible to operate a vacation rental in the city of Palm Springs and the administrative fine of $5,000 for operating the unregistered vacation rental property. Board Secretary, please ensure the city staff and appellant understand that their testimony is under oath. We do have signed affidavit from city staff and the appellant is on Zoom who desires to testify under this appeal hearing. Under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You can begin. Mr. Clifford, please proceed. Yes, good evening. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, Board Members, uh, Stacey, and residents on the call this evening, as well as joining us in the room this evening. My name is Patrick Clifford with the Department of Special Program Compliance, and we oversee the vacation rental program here in the city of Palm Springs. Before you this evening, a staff report for the property of the 2820 North Arcadia, or number B206. It was found that this property was advertised as a short term rent, and a citation was issued June 17, 2023. The elements that led to the issuance of the citation are included in your staff report. Additionally, the code compliance officer that investigated the property and issued the citation is here this evening. And I would like to invite that code officer up to provide further testimony. Thank you. Mr. Whitaker, introduce yourself and proceed, please. Good evening, members of the board, my fellow city staff, members present, um, both online and in person for tonight's hearing. My name is Jason Whitaker, and I'm a code compliance officer for the city of Palm Springs. On Saturday, June 17th, 2023, while conducting a review of available rental listings on the web based booking platform Airbnb.com, I came across an advertisement in the Palm Springs Village to a neighborhood of Palm Springs titled Palm Springs Cozy Condo and Pool, which can be found as attachment number five in the staff report. While reviewing the advertisement, it stated that the entire one bedroom condo was being offered for up to three guests. I was unable to find a city ID number on the advertisement as required for a registered vacation rental property. So I reviewed the photos contained within the ad and I was able to positively identify property address as 230, sorry, I'm putting the wrong thing, 2820 North Arcadia Court Unit B206. Upon review of the city's vacation rental registration records, I confirmed that the property did not hold a vacation rental registration certificate. I then sent a message via the airbnb.com contact host feature, which can be found in attachment number six 
inquiring about a five night stay around Friday, June 30th, 2023, and departing on Wednesday, July 5th, 2023. My message stated, hi there, cute condo. We're looking to book for 4th of July weekend, and I wanted to see if the check-in time is flexible. Not a deal breaker, if not, thanks. I sent the following second message approximately six hours later to the host. Hi, just checking back to see if the property is available for those dates I requested. The host, Julio, responded to my inquiry with the following unique response. Hey, Wayne, I'm so sorry. Yesterday, I was at a friend's funeral. I was extremely distracted. The host, Julio, then followed up with the following second message minutes later. I would be happy to host you, you guys. Subsequently, after receiving this last message from the host, I received an invitation by Julio to book a short-term stay for the dates of June 30th through July 5th, 2023. As a result of my findings contained within the advertisement, the unique response to my inquiry, as well as the host invitation to book for a five-night stay, I found that the property located at 2820 North Arcadia Court Unit B206 was in violation of PSMC 5.25040A, operating a vacation rental registration, sorry, vacation rental without a vacation rental registration certificate. And I issued administrative citation number AB0531 to the property owner on title, Martin Castrillo. That will conclude what I have to present. I will hand it back over to Patrick and I'm available to answer any questions. I think you have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Clover. Are there questions of the city? I, I just have a question. Did um did, is there a way to tell like how long that ad was up before you see it, or do we know when it was placed? I sorry, I do not know mm -hmm. how long it was up. Patrick, do we know if this condo has an HOA rule? Well, there's like a list of them, right? I believe, excuse me, sorry. Um, I believe this condominium no longer allows uh, short term rentals. Uh, there's two uh, communities that is the Palm Spring Vias. There's one that's the gated community, the gated one, and there's one that's non gated. The gated community, um, we understand, does not. And then the non gated one just recently, I think, stopped allowing. Uh, Short term rentals. So, yep. from what I understand, both of those complexes now do not permit short term rentals. Got it. Thanks. Mr. Vanessa? So, um, I see in the ad that you included in our report, um, Julio, who is the tenant that did the ad, um, has 27 reviews. Is that, do we know if that's for other properties? Other properties. It is not tied to this. So, there was, there was no reviews that we could identify as to this property. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mr. Scully? No questions. And no questions here. At this time, I would like to open the appeal hearing. The appellant is invited to speak for up to 10 minutes. Any members of the public who wish to speak on this appeal hearing shall have up to three minutes to speak. If any member of the public testifies, the appellant will be invited to provide an additional rebuttal of up to two minutes. Board Secretary, please begin the public testimony period. As advised, anyone who desires to testify under this appeal hearing, under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You may begin. The appellant may begin testimony. Martin, habla, habla, hijo, por favor. Están esperando que hables. I believe Jeanette is going to translate for Martin Castrillo. Okay, Martín, te puedes decir yo yo lo hago yo yo lo yo lo repito por ti yo yo, yo lo voy a hacer translate, ¿ok? Martín, estás ahí. Martín. He might have been muted. You might have to ask him to unmute. Um, uh, Martín, uh, presiona el mute, or maybe maybe you can unmute him. No. Oh. Okay. Ahí está. Hola, There we go. Mi nombre es Martín Castrillo. Este, yo la propiedad, yo se la renté a Julio Martínez y no entendía, o sea, lo que estaba pasando. Yo tuve que viajar por razones de familiares por dos meses. Por dos meses yo viajé hasta que yo recibí la notificación. 
y esta es la primera vez que me pasa, no sé qué es lo que pasó, y nomás me les pido pues que si por favor me pueden comprender y me pueden ayudar. Uh, do you want me to translate? Yes, please. yes, please. Okay. Uh, the, my name is Martin. My name is Martin Castrillo. This is the first time I had to travel for family uh, business, and I rented the property to Julio Martinez. Um, according to him, this property uh, he he was trying to sublease it, so sub rented and rented um, while he was renting it from you. And um, he doesn't, Martin doesn't understand exactly what happened. He is pleading that uh, to please understand him. This is the only time he never collected anything. Um, as soon as he got the notification, he stopped and he promised he will never be a problem for you. I, I had a conversation with him. He, by the way, is my brother. Oh. <clears throat> Further testimony? Is there further testimony? Uh, ¿Vas a decir algo más, Martín? Sí, que, que la propiedad ahorita ya la puse a la venta porque ya no quiero tener más problemas y que si por favor me pueden ayudar en eso para ya no tener más este complaint. Ok. Uh, he just put the property on the market. He wants to sell it and he never want to be a problem and no more uh, complaints. And he uh, he feels very sorry for this, but he was not informed. And you know, just so you know, uh, his mother passed away and that's why he was away from, from those two months. Mm -hmm. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Questions uh, from the board to the appellant? I actually do have uh, a question. So um, thank you for translating for one. Um, the Julio who rented from Martin uh, put this up for short-term rental. Is Julio still occupying the condo? No, he immediately terminated when he got this complaint. Okay, thank you. Uh, nothing further from me. Ms. Parker? I have one, and uh, thanks, Jeanette, for translating as well. Um, so uh, did Martin say that Julio placed the ad for a subtenant, or was it his? And I guess my question is, is did he know that this was a short-term lease that Julio was placing? No, he didn't know anything. He was, by the way, out of the country for those months. Ms. Kane? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I mean, this is really a frightening thing that can happen to people. And what we're, the thing I just want to make clear to you uh, as the appellants is that what we're talking about here is um, a vacation rental, like a short-term rental certificate, not that he will never be allowed to rent it again. Clearly, it's a risk if you if you rent, right? Things can happen. Um, but what we're deciding today here shouldn't make him think that he like has to leave Palm Springs. I mean, it's up to him. He can do whatever he wants. But all we're doing today, right, is talking about the ability for this property to be a vacation rental for short term use. And I just want to make that clear. Thank I you. can tell him if you want. Yes, please. Martin then... dice que el, el, el que esto que está pasando no quiere decir que tú dejes la ciudad de una vez, que ellos no te están diciendo esto. Tú puedes hacer lo que tú quieras, pero tú tienes también derechos pues y él y ellos quieren que tú sepas que también que no te tienes que ir así pero um, esto es lo que te quieren decir nada más les quieres decir algo más sí, es que la, la propiedad yo la compré porque la para remodelarla y vivir en ella pero por problemas familiares pues no me puedo mover de donde yo vivo entonces por eso 
de había decidido rentarla, pero como no se puede, entonces este, voy a decidir venderla. Uh -huh. he, he bought it originally for him, but he had this problem with his family and he had to leave. Uh, but just he doesn't want any problems with nobody. He never had any problems before and he respectfully yeah, wants to just avoid problems and decided 100% sell it and he terminated Julio immediately, just so you know. Thank you. Mr. Vasily, any questions? No, nothing. Now uh, we've done this a number of months in a row, but counsel, I'm going to ask you and our translator, uh, the law surrounding the fact that he didn't know uh, is, as I said, this law is very strict. And I want counsel to explain to you so that you understand why the fact that he didn't know about it is not helpful in this case. So counsel, if you would do that, and if you need to stop him, and translate in parts, that's fine also. But I'm going to let counsel explain uh, the uh, the law on this with regard to him not knowing about the rental of the property. Uh, yes, yeah, so as you know, as the board has heard previously, uh, in terms of the relevant municipal code sections uh, in chapter 5.25 of the municipal code, uh, what essentially what they, uh, what they state is that operating a vacation rental uh, without uh, a vacation rental registration certificate uh, is a violation uh, of, of the municipal code. Uh, and section uh, C, subdivision C of section 5.25.090 uh, provides that any person who operates a vacation rental without a vacation registration certificate shall be liable to the city for the payment of transit occupancy tax uh, pursuant to the provisions of Palm Bay Municipal Code Chapter 3.24, including without limitation penalties and interest, payment of an administrative fine in the amount of $5,000 and permanent ineligibility. Uh, and because the and because of the language of that provision, uh, there is no requirement that, that a property owner uh, operate a vacation rental uh willfully or or even you know be aware that that violation is occurring it is a strict penalty offense and so what that means is that uh you know any violation even if it was unwillful or unknowing uh still gives rise to uh to the penalty set forth uh in subdivision c of section 5.25.090 five, five, so what you can say with all that lawyers uh Talk that just went on is the law requires uh, the, the vacation rental and it it does not the uh, owner does not have to have knowledge that this was rented in order for there to be a violation so you can pass on what you think is relevant at this point to your to your uh right. to the appellant so what you're what you're saying is that the violation will still is still in place and he's banned from never be able to do rentals again we haven't voted yet but uh we have not voted but he will not be banned from long-term rentals if he ever wants if, if that's the outcome of this of this appeal but i think it's important for everybody to understand that the law requires we've had many cases like this where the tenant uh, rented without knowledge of the owner and that doesn't matter under the law. And that's, I think, an important point for everybody to understand. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, the appealing of this case today uh, doesn't help in any way because it's just explaining to you his situation, but it's still, he's still being imposed the $5,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fine. yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna vote on that in a minute, but that's, 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 that's fairly stating the situation. Even he never was, if there was no warning and it, it, even nothing of that, they, they, it, it just goes straight to the fine. Yeah, that's the end and, and the suspension. But let's go ahead then and see if there are any questions or any discussion. We'll have a motion and then you can listen in on that. So is there any discussion now of the case? The, the only thing I was going to say, it looks like Mr. Julio was a super host because he had so many reviews from him. So I'm wondering if he's a, not that it helps the situation, but if he's running other things that, you know, mm -hmm. in this, like signing a lease and then doing this on the side. 
Yeah. Other discussion? Well, I think like you had said, the um, we've been down this road a number of times where somebody without the owner's knowledge, but the ordinance is pretty clear, the penalty, knowledge or not, the penalty falls on the owner. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's unfortunate, but but the owner is ultimately responsible. And, you know, I would hope that this owner goes after Julio yes. for putting him in this position. He already did. He canceled and suspended and quit him immediately. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line, I, I, I'm going to translate to him. And it is, um, so the appeal today it, it is just to remind everyone that there's a law and everybody is still with the find. And well, Martin Martin will never be able to rent again or apply for a permit to ever rent or have a rental that. property. I think we need to clarify that. Yes, yeah. I, I, I mean, short term rentals only. He can always rep, always rent for 28, 29. Nine, 29 days or more. That will not be prohibited. But I'm going to go right now. I'm going to go ahead and have the uh, a motion made and have the vote taken before you tell him. That'll make it easier. So if I could have a motion. I motion that we uphold. The motion has been made to uphold the suspension and the fine. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any further discussion? With a second. Can I ask a question? Um, so this this um this violation just goes with the property. So if this owner is to purchase a new yeah. property, will that violation travel with that owner? No, the, the property owner is currently ineligible. Got it, okay. And okay. we declare they're ineligible for short-term yeah. rentals. Short-term rentals only. So they need to be specific. It's very specific about short-term, not long-term. Secretary, would you please call the roll? Board Member Parker? Aye. Vice Chair Vanessa? Aye. Board Member Facilli? Aye. Board Member Kane? Aye. And Chair Sinclair? Aye. Motion carries by zero to adopt resolution. You may tell the appellant, the appellant that the uh, appeal has been upheld. The city will be in contact with regard to the fine and that he is eligible to rent for more than 29 days. Okay, I'll explain to him. Okay, thank you for your time. Good job, by the way. Okay, our final appeal of the or final appeal of the day is appeal of the administrative decision of oh, is that my correct one? Yeah, of a six month suspension of a vacation rental registration certificate and the administrative fine of twenty five hundred dollars per my act use. And please forgive me if I butchered that for the property located at thirty two thirty North Sand Spring Drive, Palm Spring. Board Secretary, please ensure that the city staff and the appellant understand their testimony is under oath. We do have a signed affidavit from city staff and the appellant is also in person. Anyone on Zoom who does desire to testify under this appeal hearing, under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Clifford, you may proceed. Can I ask you to pause for just a yeah, moment? Yeah, we're like um, downloading slow. Uh, none of the reports okay. will open for us. Slow. Okay. Please, no. Anybody need a break to have a comfort time? Yeah. No, let's nope. do it. We just need this to. Mine just popped in. Oh, oh but mine just like not having it. Yeah. Just not. <gasps> Got it. <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting. Dun, dun, dun. It's going this way. It's there. It's going this way. <laughs> it knows. Okay. If you want to go ahead and start off. He off. can share mine. Okay. It's fine. It looks like it's oh no. Yeah, right. Defective. Thank you. <laughs> Go for it. Thank you, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, Board Members, uh, City Staff, uh, residents on the call this evening, and joining us in the room this evening. My name is Patrick Clifford with the Department of Special Program Compliance. And we oversee the vacation rental program here at City Plus Springs. Before you this evening, staff report for the property located at 3230 North Sand Springs Drive. In this property, some background, 
is a vacation registered vacation rental with a start date of June 1st, 2022. It was found that this property um, failed to submit contract summaries as required to our vacation rental ordinance 2075 for any guest space that were 20 degrees or less. Code compliance investigated this property, and I would invite Code compliance to provide further testimony um, to what led to the issuance of the citation. Additionally, as of August 16th, a review of the contract summaries. Um, as what is included in your staff report as objection six shows that no contract summaries have been submitted. And to, with that determination, I believe this is what led to the citation to be 0532 and then administrative fine of $2,500. I just know that I would like to um, invite co supervisor Matt Han to provide further testimony on what led to the issue of the citation. Thank you. Mr. Naban, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board, my fellow city staff, and members of the public joining us uh, for tonight's hearing. My name is Mitch Nathan. I'm a co compliance supervisor for the city of Palm Springs, and I oversee the vacation rental enforcement program. Uh, as Patrick mentioned, um, before you this evening is consideration of the citation that was issued to the property owner of 3230 North Sandspin Drive for failing to submit a contract summary. Uh, this originally came across my desk as a lead from our Office of Special Program Admin staff while they were processing the renewal application for this property. And you can see that as part of attachment five, I believe it's a page number eight, attachment five. Upon receiving that information, I searched the city's applicable record keeping database and confirmed that the city had not received any contract summary submissions for 3230 North Sand Spring Drive, city ID number 5021. Uh, at that point, I enlisted the help of Code Officer Whit uh, Whitaker to open an investigation. During the course of our investigation, we found a corresponding advertisement for the property on Airbnb.com, uh, which can be found also in attachment number five, which had reviews dating back to July of 2022, uh, which is consistent with when this property was issued its initial registration certificate. There were approximately 19 reviews from guests who had stayed at the property, uh, many of which indicated that they were short-term stays. Uh, I believe most of those are highlighted. Uh, we also confirmed that TOT remittances were submitted for the property, uh, which also confirmed that they were facilitating the stays. On June 15th, 2023, Officer Whitaker contacted the property owner, uh, Amin Akhuz, which apologies if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, and requested records in accordance with Chapter 52580 of the Vacation Run Ordinance. So this chapter is related to audits and states that each owner, agent, or representative of any owner shall provide the enforcement official with access to each vacation rental and the books, records, documents, papers, tax returns, and bank accounts at any time during normal business hours as the enforcement official may determine are necessary or convenient for the purpose of inspection or audit to determine that the objectives and conditions of this chapter are being fulfilled. Uh, knowing there were no recorded contract summary submissions. I instructed Officer Whitaker to make a request for copies of the signed and completed City of Palm Springs Vacation Rental Statement of Rules and Regulations forms for all guest stays and vacation rental bookings from October 2022 to June 2023, a six month period. Uh, it's important to note that completing the Statement of Rules and Regulations form is a separate requirement in addition to and in not in lieu of submitting a contract summary. It is generally done during the check-in process between the property owner or their agent and their guests. Copies of this form are only provided to the city if requested, and in this case, they were requested so that we can determine the property's utilization as a vacation rental and ensure compliance with the limits uh, of contracts for vacation rental use. Uh, Ms. Accus responded with scanned copies of 33 forms for vacation rental stays within the requested time frame. Uh, I know that I believe those are seen at the end of attachment um, mm -hmm. number five. After reviewing all of the findings in our investigation, it was determined that Mr. Hughes was in violation of PSMC 525-070H uh, for facilitating uh, approximately 33 vacation rental states between October 2022 and May 2023 and failing to submit a contract summary prior to their guests taking occupancy in each case. As a result, Officer Whitaker drafted a notice of violation and citation to the vacation rental owner, Amin Accus, and was sent via certified mail to the address on file. 
Uh, and that'll conclude what I have to present, but I'm available uh, for any questions that come forward with that. That's Dr. Patrick. And thank, and thank you, Adam. Questions of the city staff? So, do you uh, have any questions before you come? <laughs> I looked at this stuff. I know, I did too. Um, so your request for information was for a six month period and they showed you the rules forms for 33 stays in six months? Correct. Yeah. Um, and since they had their permit in 2022, they're only allowed 36 in a 12 month period. Correct. Um, wow. That's a lot of rentals. Well, they would have been prorated for the year beginning 2022, uh, depending on when their um, certificate was issued in June. Oh, I guess so, that's, it would have covered over. That's, yeah. that's so, a fair point. It would have yeah. crossed over yeah, to one year. Years. I believe there was 23 rental stays up to that point for a uh, year to date of 2023. Okay. And what was provided to us. Okay. So it. thank you. Then I will kind of retract because it does cross over two calendar years. Mm -hmm. So it's not as many, I guess, as it appears to be. Still high utilization for six months. Yeah. But, but I guess that's good for her. Good for her right there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Has anybody ever exceeded 36? I don't believe that we've issued any citations for um, <laughs> exceeding the contract limits. But as far as doing the investigations, um, both reactively and uh, proactively, as we've started doing in the last five months, I don't know that we've done. That's been very robust um, in, since it came into uh, as a regulation in 2018. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, most of the findings that we find are just usually simply no contracts on this year. Uh, where you know we're starting to look at, and it's probably easier to get towards close to the end of the calendar year. Well, we can probably start seeing more evidence of contract summaries that are exceeding the annual limit. Uh, limit allotment. But usually, if we start looking at those in the spring, it's still so so early in the year that most people probably have not even attempted and even got to that limit yet. So a lot of that investigation would be pushed more towards the end of the calendar year. Sorry, I was just curious. Other questions? Is this uh, owner managed or uh, management company managed? So I believe this is categorized as an owner operated. Okay, thank you. And, and you said that they did pay the TOT tax. Yeah. So we have, um, while reviewing, uh, we reviewed the records going back for the entire year from when they were issued their um, registration certificate, and there was gross receipts that were submitted, I believe, for the months of July, August, and September. And then uh, they submitted zero dollar remittances for October and November. Uh, and then at, at that point, the the system changed, and so we had less visibility um, as far as like what they actually submitted. But we have no reason to believe that they are not up to date with their TS remittances. Okay, thank you, Ms. Kane, Ms. Parker. No, no, okay. All right. Thank you all for your testimony. At this time, I would like to open the uh, hearing, the appeal hearing. The appellant is invited to speak up to 10 minutes. Any members of the public who wish to speak on this appeal hearing shall have up to three minutes. If any member of the public testifies, the appellant will be invited to provide a rebuttal of up to two minutes. Board Secretary, please begin the public testimony period. We do have a signed affidavit. Please state your name and uh, begin your testimony. Good evening. Oh, good evening, everyone. This is Annie Akius. Um, I'm the owner of 323 Journal Times Big Drive. Thank you so much for this opportunity to explain myself. I didn't do this uh, submit, like, I didn't submit a contract. Uh, but I was just keeping up on my records. I didn't know I have to send them to see. I was just sending to the customers, getting their e signatures, but I was keeping up on my records. And I when Mr. Jason, Officer Jason called me, I noticed that I have to send them to see. And then this is my only income. I wanted to take everything like seriously because before I bought this house, I did all the searches. I if I have to get any permits from the city. And I after that I bought this house. And then I didn't want to, you know, get any like, violation. I wanted to be like good owner for the you know short term rental. Uh, but I, this is the mistake. I mean, I received an email from the city, uh, but there was a PDF file. I thought I, that's only form I have to fill out and keep it from my records. 
that was the mistake I made. So now I know it's really important for the city and for my you know short term rental to submit the contracts. I'm really you know apologizing you guys and like you know if we can just give me another opportunity to you know keep my short term rental and like you know waive the violation of these. <clears throat> Anything else? No, thank you so much. Are there any questions? Starting with Mr. Parker. Yeah, I just have one. Were, were the um, contracts, the rules and regulations, were they actually signed by yeah, the signature, yeah. Oh, he's signature. Sorry. Okay. That, that was just, I was just curious. I saw, I looked like they were um, just printed. Oh, yeah. No, the, there's another like. Right. Oh, okay. yeah, There's another like attachment that showed the uh, docu science image. I think they just highlighted what the black okay. side. Oh, redacted. Okay. For ours, it's redacted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there was one that would just have like um, some printing and a name. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Ms. Kane, any questions? Um, I guess this is kind of dumb, but how many? I don't know if it's who it's for. You, this is a highly utilized, as we said, uh, property. And this suspension has not begun yet. Is that correct? That's correct. I, I thought I had a letter draft to have signed by the city manager. I cannot find such letter. So um, I'll look to see if that's been drafted approved yet. Um, but with that, once it is, it'll have an effective start. We will have a suspension. It would be pretty quickly. I'm just thinking a lot of how many, but you just said these are over two years. 22 and 23. 22 and 23. So she's not like done in 23 anyway. Do you see what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. Six, six, six months over two parts. It's not really a question. It's me trying to figure out uh, exactly where you're at in this game. But um, no, I think I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Nassim? Yeah, so um, it seems like... Uh, there's confusion between two issues. Mm -hmm. One is that rules form. Mm -hmm. Whoops, sorry here. Uh, that there's confusion between two issues. One is the city's good neighbor form, the rules that you have the renters mm -hmm. sign. That's separate from, and you're doing that. That's separate than the contract mm -hmm. summaries. Those are done online. Yes. Um, and so that step um, wasn't completed. I guess my question is, you manage the property yourself? Um, so you would have filled out the paperwork to get the permit, um, mm -hmm. and you would have initialed next to the mm -hmm. part that states. Yeah, uh, I mean, yes, I, yeah. Yeah, and then also when you got the permit, mm -hmm. the the city, um, from what we've seen, highlights that contract mm -hmm. summaries are required. Mm -hmm. So you would have seen, uh, is that correct? You would have seen all of that. But I'll say I didn't notice that. Form that I feel out. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Mr. Basile? No questions. Okay. I have none either. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, now we're, we're going to uh, open discussion by the board and any additional questions? I don't have any. Mr. Vanessa looks like he's ready to. Yeah. yeah no. So, um, you know, it's an interesting, um, I mean, she, clearly is doing a good job of renting mm -hmm. the property and, and doing a good job of operating it. Um, it's rare that we see one so highly utilized um, and good for you for doing such a good job. Um, those contract summaries, as we have seen over and over again, are an important part for the city. That's not the only way the city knows how many times it's rented to kind of keep it under control. Um, and unfortunately, not noticing that when it's kind of you initial next to it and then it's it's reminded when you actually get the permit um, isn't um, an excuse for that. So that's my two cents. Other discussion? None from okay. Mr. Parker and none from Mr. May I have a motion? I'll make the motion that we uphold the fine and the suspension. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? If not, uh, would the secretary please call the roll? Board Member Vasili? Aye. Board Member Parker? Aye. Board Member King? Aye. Vice Chair Vanessa? Aye. And Chair Sinclair? Aye. Motion carries 5 0 in the position. A suspension and a fine have been upheld, and uh, it will be in touch with you with regard to your payment.
Unfortunately, as I've said, you've maybe heard me say earlier tonight, we don't have any leeway in these cases at all. The ordinance is what it is. So thank you for your time and thanks to the board for the consideration. So now we move on to the approval of the minutes from July 26, 2023. Is it working? May I have a motion? <clears throat> Say, Mr. Parker, you may want to recuse yourself from this vote and that you weren't so recused. part of it. Actually, you would abstain, uh, but you were you were here during that meeting. I was so there. You're yeah. more than welcome to. Right. Yes, it would be an abstention of recusal, and really, what, what the vote is is just verifying the accuracy of the minutes. So, if you were at the meeting before you had watched it and could confirm the accuracy of the meetings uh, of the minutes, you could, you could still participate in the vote if you would like. Yeah. Okay. May I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. Board Secretary, will you call the roll, please? Vice Chair Vanessa? Aye. Board Member Vasily? Aye. Board Member Kane? Aye. Board Member Parker? Aye. And Chair Sinclair? Aye. Motion carries 5 0 to approve the minutes. The next portion of the meeting is set aside for general comments, announcements, requests of the staff, and other issues. Of concern to members of the Administrative Appeals Board. Anybody have anything? Uh, no. Just looking at that. Is that from last? I don't know. I don't know. What, oh, what maybe. are you looking at? I don't know. Sorry. I thought there was something else. But if item 10 is comments and questions, is that what it is? Yes. Okay. I got enough. Actually, um, if you, I can ask a question on your no, behalf. I, yeah, okay. Didn't you talk about last time of setting up a subcommittee of which Mr. Moses was part? I was yeah. going to bring that up. Oh, during all right. Uh, yeah, then, I guess, I that's that what I was you. looking at. The I old believe we'll have to bring that back to the next yeah. agenda. Correct. Yes, it's in the model on this agenda. You can't take action on it uh, today, but, but you can place it on the agenda. Uh, to bring it back uh, in case you'd like to appoint someone new to the subcommittee to replace uh, Member Moses. Thank you. Speaking of Member Moses, one thing that's bothered me on the years I've been on this commission is people leave, obviously, as Stephen has. He made great contributions. And I think when that happens, we should have a, a resolution passed by this board thanking him for his time and commending him for his service. Now we can put that on next month's agenda since it's not here now, but I think that would just that thing, be a nice thing to do. Is that thing you've ever done, Cassandra? I just think it would be a nice thing. Um, if, if we are able to do it. Council, do you see any reason why we can't? It, it's just, it I, would, I would like to verify in the municipal code that the board would be authorized to adopt right. a resolution such as that. Right. Um, I will look into it and I will let uh, the deputy city clerk know uh, yeah. uh, so that you all can be informed that that's something that you can bring forward. Uh, and, and it's a council we'll thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Not really a nice. thing, but but I hear you. We should yeah. maybe ask council. But so we've done that. There that is. Okay. Does the city attorney have any report or comments? Not that I was next. Uh, <laughs> no, I have no report. Pay attention. City Clerk, do you have anything other than the uh, replacing of uh, former board member Moses? So it's not officially on the agenda yet. It will be with when okay. City Council approves it. Um, but our other alternate did also resign. So we potentially will have the two alternates vacant again. Um, our next meeting. Going forward from now on, they'll all be at 5.30, no longer at 4.30, because we have cleaned up all of our backlog, pretty much. Um, and Patrick, do you want to speak on the denial of applications? Because we'll be seeing you have one in September and one in October so far. Yeah, I think that we get a brief uh, okay. So uh, the board will be seeing uh, a new uh, type of denial um, issued by our regional uh, office, what you've seen. You know, currently and before is uh, properties that have found offer and dust certificates, so thus we're denying them that certificate. Uh, thus, uh, going forward, we'll probably have a couple of cases coming that where they attempted to renew their vacation rental certificate, but we denied them the renewal uh, because of confidence that they're going to have um, related to this code. So 
uh, it'd be a, just a different um, type of denial. Um, <laughs> this is an administrative denial of the issue. Yeah. Just uh, give us an example of a I, denial. I didn't hear why they were being denied. Well, that's what yeah, it's appropriate for me to. You know, talk about this picture, okay. Uh, I would advise if you think it's an upcoming hearing that the, the board and and so I would advise the board to wait to hear uh, any type of commentary on that um, at the meeting, uh, just to avoid you know having any prejudgments or anything. Okay. In, so, in uh, general, though, yeah. some sort of an yeah. administrative uh, reason. kinds of uh, things you would deny anybody for. Of course, and it's it's in general to deny you a vacation certificate. So it's just they they applied to uh, have the renewal, and we deny them because of a conflict. Right, and so I guess my question is with respect to conflict in the ordinance, it's the vacation rental ordinance. It's not a building code issue or a fire code. Like it's not something that we don't have. Right. A depth of unders. It's a vacation rental ordinance, ordinance, ordinance conflict, which is intriguing, and I'll be curious to see what that is. Okay. And it is within our belly Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to make sure I was waiting into things I didn't understand. That's correct. It's now vacation And did I miss the general things that one might deny? He didn't. For? He didn't really say. It's a conflict in <laughs> the vacation okay. rental ordinance. We'll hear, all we'll hear about what we were told is we'll hear about the conflict as they arise. Oh, okay. So that we're not. We have no idea what. As long as we have background on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how we can base an approved or denial. That's why he's we'll here. We we'll always do. All good. And so my next question is: is right now we have five for September. I haven't noticed them yet. Do we want to go back to four since it's going now? We're going back to five thirty. Oh, four, four appeals four cases, cases. Yeah. We'll get them oh, done. Per, per session, so, so this yeah. took us two hours. Five, and that was five. We're good with five. Well, it's it's five. Denial my feeling would be to use your discretion yeah. if you feel like a case has kind of been pushed and you need to put it in there, put it in there. Yeah. Well, it's not that they've been pushed. It's just as they come in, we yeah. kind of schedule them. So do we want to sit at four or do we want to sit at five? Let's get them done. Yeah. Five? yeah. Yeah, we're good. And then we can always change it as we go along. Right. It yeah. seems to go too long. Right. Okay. So that's all I got. May I have a motion to adjourn? You don't need a motion to adjourn. Yes, ma'am, we do. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, yes you, do. you do. I uh, saw uh, <laughs> so <hold it>. And <laughs> I always thought you'd need a second, but I'm told we also need a second. So. I'm not doing that for the drug. <laughs> can I have a second? Can <laughs> I explain it? But legal explain it. Why? If it is, it is. I just don't like you it. Know, it's, I see different agencies. Adjourn, but I see some agencies in the general without it. I'll have to check and make sure yeah. it's a requirement. Is it a round act? But it may be a requirement under the board's policy. Yeah, it's not. All procedures. It's not. It's not. It's not. We're curious. So, okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, it's not. We're both by standing and you stand at your p